Aloha, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Lillian Speak and World. I'm coming to you live from gorgeous downtown Honolulu. I am a vegan chef and author of the new book, Lillian's, uh, not Lillian's Vegan World, that's his show, of Hawaii, A Vegan Paradise. Today, I'm so excited to have on my show, all the way from Maui, live with us today, Sherry Brinks, macrobiotic chef and nutritionist. Welcome to the show, Sherry. So awesome to have you on. Thank you, Lillian. Really happy to be here. <laughs> you know what? I, I have been vegan for quite some time now, 14 years, and I've been in this vegan food industry for about 20 years. But one thing I've not delved into yet is macrobiotics. So I'm really, really excited to talk to you and learn about what, it, what it's all about. Sherry, first of all, I'd love for you to introduce yourself to the viewers and tell us all a little bit, a little bit about you. Oh, okay. So I live here in Maui, and I have a Taoist healing art school here in Haiku, where we teach Chi Ne Song and nutrition, and we have macrobiotic potlucks here once a month, and we do some Qigong, and it's a Taoist healing art school here in Maui. And so I got into the healing arts uh, many, many years ago in my 20s. And uh, now I'm here doing macrobiotic nutrition as well, because my husband and I actually healed our health condition through macrobiotics. And we tried everything. And macrobiotics is the one thing that actually healed our condition. Sherry, before we go on, please explain to the viewers exactly what macrobiotics is. So macrobiotics is a yin-yang philosophy. And when it's yin and yang, some people, they, you know, eat fruits or they eat meat. You know, so meat would be very yang and sugar would be very yin. But we want to go on the middle path. And what's the middle path? Well, it's not too yang, animals, and it's not too yang, yang, yin, yang. <laughs> it's not too yang or yin. And um, which is processed sugar is yin and animals is yang. We want to go in the middle ground. And what's the middle ground? Miso soup, vegetables, grains. And we also don't do dairy as well. So it's very, uh, it alkalizes the system. It builds the immune system and it strengthens the gut. And also it's a yin yang philosophy. So it's very balancing the food. Uh, where it's taking the middle path rather than like the extreme yang or the extreme yin. Mm, interesting. Mm -hmm. A lot of energy in the body as well, doing the okay. seven protocol. Mm -hmm. I did take a look at your awesome Facebook page, which is uh, under your name, Sherry Brinks. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of information there about macrobiotics. I actually learned a lot just scrolling through some of your posts. And I did, I did notice, I did see the uh, Japanese miso soup recipe that you made from scratch using dashi. I actually lived in Japan for 30 years and that's where I uh, started my career as a chef. So it was awesome to see that. And most of us know that the Japanese have one of the life, longest lifespans in the world. So there's definitely something to be said of that cuisine. It's very interesting. Yeah, um, I was reading that about you, about your book, and then I was actually studying a little bit about what you do with the veganism in your book, and I saw that you did live in Japan, and then you were making broths and dashi, and I was like, oh my gosh, because that's one of my dreams is to go to Japan and spend time there, you know, studying a little bit more on how they, more on the macrobiotic part, you know, because I know mm -hmm. they have macrobiotic over there, different places that they cook and the foods that they have over there. So I'm very excited to uh, visit one day. So that is so amazing that you got to stay there and live there and learn. Yes, it's, I, an, it's I, definitely an amazing place. Yeah, because what I um, heard in the statistics say that the women over there in Japan don't go through painful menstrual cycles and they don't have menopause symptoms because of the seaweed and the miso and the vegetables and the way they eat they don't really have to go through the big menopause or the painful menstrual cycles that the women have here in the western and uh, i think it's the only actually country that uh, the women are very healthy in that way 
That's so interesting. And, and I, I, be, I believe that actually, I eat pretty much like a Japanese person as well. And uh, I'm going to be 50 next month in a few weeks. And I, I'll just put it out there. I haven't reached menopause or do not have any symptoms at all thus far. Um, but this is about the age where, you know, that sort of stuff starts to kick in. So maybe there is definitely, you know, that Japanese cuisine is something to look into. So I was excited to see that it is included in the macrobiotic biotic diet. So Sherry, tell us more. Um, First of all, what is the condition that you, you healed, you and your husband oh, okay. were healed so, from? So macrobiotics, um, as long as we refrain away from processed sugar, animals, and dairy, which macrobiotics actually uses a little bit of fish. And the reason why is because some people are weak. They're very weak in their condition. So they need a little bit more yang. So then actually, that's actually a medicine fish for that. But it's very rare, you know, it's just on certain people. But with macrobiotics, it's mostly vegan. But it uses a protocol. So the difference between vegetarianism, veganism, and macrobiotics is that macrobiotics has a certain protocol that you have, you need to eat the certain protocol throughout the week to discharge the excess yin that's in the system. And so that protocol is like the miso soup and the umabushi plum and the sauerkraut and vegetables and grains and uh, the kakucha tea and uh, um, uh, not umabushi plum, but the, uh, cause I mentioned that already, but they have the sesame seeds, the gamaggio. So all of this is a protocol to help heal the condition. So what's happening is, is that when I started eat, uh, eating the macrobiotics, um, my husband and I, we tried everything. We called doctors, we went to uh, health, like holistic health doctors, and uh, I think I went to three different Western doctors, and they couldn't figure anything out what I had. In fact, I almost died from, they gave me um, some kind of medication because uh, they thought it was like, um, what is it like, uh, what is that called? Um, like a bladder infection. And so they said, just take this antibiotic, but they didn't really test me. And I was allergic to that antibiotic and I woke up in the middle of the night and I was shaking and I almost died. And then the emergency came and then they took me to the emergency and they said, well, you don't have a bladder infection. Why are you taking this? I said, well, the doctor gave it to me, but they didn't really come out with the test or anything. So, I, I mean, I literally thought I was going to die because I was actually allergic to that when they gave me the sofe uh, antibiotic. So then um, I studied and then even one doctor told me over the phone that I had cancer. And so but by that time, I was like, oh, my God. So I laid on the floor and my whole my adrenals just tightened up and I, I had this back pain. and I was so scared. I was like, oh, my God, this doctor just told me that I had bladder cancer over the phone. So then I was just like, oh my God, oh my God. And I, I was really scared at that time, right? And I remember that I studied macrobiotics way back when, when I lived in LA, because I was doing the acting and the actors were into the macrobiotics. And then one of the actors, or he was a pianist and he healed himself through leukemia with macrobiotics. And he says, hey, I'm going to make you a macrobiotic dinner. I said, okay. So he made me one, but I went home and I couldn't make it all the way home. But I actually was looking for a trash can and I saw this big minister and I went behind and I actually threw up. The first meal, even one meal of macrobiotics actually starts the healing process to discharge all the stuff in the body. And back then in my 20s in Hollywood, I was like eating fast food hamburgers and stuff, you know. <laughs> so I was so excited about this that I actually went to the macrobiotic center in the Bay Area. And they were healing people with cancer. They had this one side where all the cancer patients were staying. And then the other side was a kitchen. And then they had the macrobiotic masters from Japan, Cornelia and her husband. Uh, they were from Japan and they were masters at it. So I went there and I paid them and then they showed me how to cook in the kitchen macrobiotically. And I was so excited. Went back to Hollywood, but I didn't have enough support to actually move there and do the program. 
So 30 years later, I get this perimenopause symptom. I mean, I don't even know what it was. I was 46 years old. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh my God, what's going on? And this is when all the doctors were telling me, oh, you know, once that I had cancer, then I went to this other person and they said, oh, well, it could be this interstitial cystitis. We don't know what it is. And then another person said, we'll take this medication. And I almost died from it. I mean, I was going through everything. I even went through holistic practitioners and they were giving me stuff and it, nothing worked. And I was still scared. I was like, oh my God, what if I do have cancer? <laughs> I was all scared. Um, so then I said, okay, I remember about this macrobiotic, um, this person that actually healed himself. Then I met two people in Sebastopol in the Bay Area when I was living there. She healed herself for colitis. And then also um, my uh, other friend healed herself for breast cancer with macrobiotics. So then I'm like, I'm just going to do macrobiotics. So I went strictly on macro. Six months later, I healed. So it, we don't really know what it was. But I'm thinking that what happened was we ate everything at the time that I built up acidity in my body. And so when I urinated, it was burning and this kind of, so it was this acid in my body. And then with my husband, he actually healed his gout. With macrobiotics so he no longer i don't have to take him to the emergency room and he's actually hawaiian he's from oahu and so his whole family they all are diabetic or they have high cholesterol um, or they have something and he's the only one that doesn't have to take medications and he's in his 60s that's incredible i i must say yes the the typical hawaiian diet um in addition to a typical American diet is probably not one of the best uh, ways you can uh, form your eating habits. So definitely, um, definitely you need to find something else, whether it's more vegetarian food, vegan food, and now we, we're talking about macrobiotics today. We are going to take a quick break soon, but before we do, Sherry, I think people really would be interested to see what it is you eat. So I do want to show one of the slides before we go to the break that you have prepared. Let's pull up the first one. So you, this is you in one of your classes, I believe. Yeah, so this is at, we hold a summer camp. No, actually I don't, but actually uh, there's somebody that holds the whole summer camp in Yosemite, a macrobiotic summer camp for 10 days. And all the teachers and practitioners and people who want to learn about it, they do this like around July, August for 10 days with cabins and camping and then different places to learn throughout, you know, it's a camp and you can learn all kinds of macrobiotic teachings there. So we were actually cooking in the kitchen there and it's so much fun because everybody gets a chance to actually cook together. And that was the time when I was cooking and we, uh, there was a bunch of us cooking in the kitchen in the macrobiotic kitchen there. Okay, awesome. Sherry, we will take a quick break and be back with you to talk more about macrobiotics and healing the body through this natural form of eating. Stay tuned, everyone. See you after the break. Welcome back everyone to Lillian's Vegan World. I'm your host Lillian Kumig and today we're talking all about macrobiotics with uh, macrobiotic chef and nutritionist Sherry Brings. Welcome back to the show again Sherry. 
So yeah, about macrobiotics, uh, it's so amazing. What happens in the beginning is that we discharge. So the protocol is when we do the protocol and we refrain from dairy, all animals and processed sugar and sometimes fruit because it's very yin and just stick to the protocol. What happens is that we start discharging and that's what happened to me and my husband when we healed our health condition is that I started blowing my nose a lot. And the reason why is because over a period of time, when one consumes any kind of animals, dairy and processed sugar, it builds up in the system. And then all of a sudden one could get like, uh, you know, I had a lump here, but it was benign actually, get lumps in the breasts or anywhere else, cancer, diabetes, any kind of health condition. Because that's really what and where the health conditions come from is dairy any kind of animals in processed sugar in the macrobiotic world. This is, you know, where most of it comes from. There's some emotional, but mostly because every disease has an emotional component, but mostly like 90% is what we eat. And so the protocol in, oh, it's amazing. A lot of us discharge out through the skin, blowing our nose. We got to get rid of all that mucus buildup whether it's, you know, a knot or, you know, a knot right here in the breast, or it could be in the organs. There's a lot of mucus buildup in the organs over the years. Mm -hmm. And so we want to discharge in macrobiotics, we call it discharging. And the only way we could discharge a lot of this is through the macrobiotic protocol. And what is that? Well, it's a seven protocol, umabushi plum, which is very alkalizing and great for the digestion. Fermented. This is a fermented sour plum. I think we call it yeah, umeboshi in Japanese. You did mention quite a few fermented foods, which, as everyone knows, is great for gut bacteria. So umeboshi is one of them. Yeah, umeboshi plum. But you want to make sure that you get the health food store. You don't want to get it at the regular stores or Asian stores because they put MSG in it. So make sure health food store only because the MSG is not good. Mm -hmm. And then um, that umabushi plum, and then we have gamaggio, which is basically roasted sesame seeds and a little bit of salt in there. And that's another thing that macrobiotics does. It mineralizes the system because we lose a lot of minerals. So that's why we add salt to a lot of the stuff. But Interesting. If a person can't handle the salt, then we lessen a lot of the salt. So um, we got umabushi plum, gamaggio, and usually I just get the sesame seeds and actually roast them myself and add some salt to it. Mm -hmm. And all of this is online. You can just type it in and get the recipe and how to make it. But they what, do- What kind of, oh, sorry, Sherry, I was going to ask what kind of salt are you using? Do you oh. use sea salt or Himalayan, uh, yeah. kosher? Well, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very much into salt and actually macrobiotics is very much into salt too. So we get it, I get mine from the macrobiotic uh, salt, uh, I mean, macrobiotic site that's online. <laughs> I know I, I, I'm so excited about this, you can see. <laughs> I, I, work, oh, I, I am too, oh. I'm, le I'm learning so much in, in only, you know, what is it, 20 minutes in, I'm learning a lot. Please continue on. Yeah, so we don't do Himalayan salt or black salt or all this other salt because it's too strong for the system. We just do regular salt. And this salt comes from Mexico, but it's like um, in a certain place. And it's the best salt for us because it's the most balancing in the system because we tried different salts. And that you get online. Uh, they have like a different places you could go. This one's goldmine.com and they have the uh, salt there. And uh, gosh, I could, there's SI salt. And then I'm trying this other salt from the macrobiotic side, but SI salt it's called. And it's the most balancing of yin yang salt for the system. Because the other salts are a little bit more stronger like Himalayan. And so we're always trying to find the most balancing one, you see. Mm -hmm. And then the um, third one is sauerkraut. 
Sauerkraut is very important because a lot of times we lose the good bacteria, someone's going to antibiotics or just we need to strengthen our guts. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to do sauerkraut, but raw sauerkraut at the health food store, very important. Yeah, mm -hmm. not, not just on a shelf or anything. It needs to be refrigerated and because that's where all the good bacteria is. Mm -hmm. And just a spoonful, a lot of people like eat, eat a whole bunch, but just a spoonful is fine, you know, every day. Interesting. I'm definitely going to do that. I love sauerkraut to begin with, but I have never tried the raw sauerkraut from a health food store. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. It's very important uh, because they have the organic usually mm -hmm. at the health food store. And we don't know what's really, you know, in it at the regular store. It's just like the Umabushi mm -hmm. pump, you know, they put MSG mm -hmm. in that. Um, so that is the fourth one. No, actually the fourth one is, um, I said the third one. The fourth one would be grains. So I know a lot of people have stuff about grains, but macrobiotic practitioners can eat grain because their gut is strong enough because they strengthen their gut through the protocol. Because when I first started eating grains, because I didn't believe in them before, but it was like, whoa, but then eventually you get strong because of the protocol of macrobiotics, your gut. Mm -hmm. And doing yeah. the ginger compress too is very mm -hmm. important. Yeah, I'm guessing it's the same as when you uh, transition from a regular diet, non-vegan diet to a vegan diet. At the beginning, you can expect to see some changes in your um, maybe bowel movement or you know your gut, maybe more gas, things like that you can probably expect, but they do go away. That's the thing. So I, I'm glad to hear that with macrobiotics too, and in the beginning, you may see some kind of awkward symptoms, but they will subside. So you do believe in eating grains yourself? Absolutely. Because yeah. mm -hmm. it's just a, yeah, it's very interesting. I mean, the wheat, yeah, I could understand that, you know, there's stuff in the weed and um, the pesticides and stuff like that. It's hard to, to digest, but it's important when people do eat uh, like bread, to not uh, just buy bread where it has all the yeast and the additives in it, but just buy where it just has salt and uh, the starter in it and the wheat, mm -hmm. and the water, and that's it, and the flour, that's it. Mm -hmm. But when you see all this stuff in it, that's what's making people have gut problems because yeah, it's, it's processed. It. Yeah, processed. anything processed is, yeah, not, not the best, but we live in a world where now people want to eat conveniently. So I was interested to, it's all about convenience, isn't it? But now that we've had this COVID year where people have had the opportunity to spend more time in their kitchens, I think this is, this is the year that people have started to change and are, and are venturing out into the cooking world a little bit more. So very exciting for someone like myself who just put out a cookbook. But uh, yeah. definitely, definitely people who you never imagined were cooking um, have started to enjoy it. Sherry, let's take a look at some of your photos. There are more photos of okay. your food. So let's pull up the set, the next one. Yeah, so the breads you get the farmer's market and usually they just have the three or four mm -hmm. in them. And I get at Whole Foods where they, it's organic, it's just the three or four in a certain bread. And then it's there, you know, or I make my own bread. But we don't have to buy the, all this bread that has all the stuff in it that makes people gain weight because yin makes a person expand. And that's all yin, the processed foods mm -hmm. and the yin that makes people expand and gain weight. So mm -hmm. we want to contract and become more yang, become stronger as we get older. Even well, I'll tell you, Sherry, if we, if we lead by example, anyone who looks at you will look at how Oh. You know, healthy and beautiful and glowing you are so whatever you're doing and whoever's watching this show if you want to look like that I think maybe start um, getting into some macrobiotic biotics Sherry yeah. let's take a look but at I'm some more of your you I'm 50 mm -hmm. almost 52 next year I mean no, yeah no. see I would I would oh. never never in a million years pick, uh, pick you to be that age but you know 50 is the new 30 so you are, if you believe that you are what you eat and stop making excuses that you are the way you are because it's hereditary or your DNA, the basic, the bottom, you know, fact is that you are what you eat. So 
um, changing your eating habits is the best way you can make changes to your body and your health. So, yeah, and like for me, it's definitely the macrobiotics, number one, and then doing my Qigong practice, which I've taught in Oahu. I'm going to be teaching Qigong over there too um, in the summer. But yeah, Qigong, yes, yoga, exercise. There's, there's, absolutely. There's so much to you, Sherry. I'm going to have to get you on next year to do a part <laughs> two follow up because there's so much more to you. You also um, ran the Taoist Healing Arts School in Maui, I believe, which did you mention that it was closed this year due to um, the COVID-19 or well, any plans founder, to start up again? I'm the founder of the Taoist Healing Arts School. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's right now closed for people to come here, but we actually do a few Zooms, not too much. And then I'll go to Oahu uh, and I teach a little, I taught at the massage school there, the Chine Song. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to be teaching a Qigong, which is outside for five people in the summer, next summer. And so uh, slowly but surely, we're going to open it back up, but not until maybe in the summer. Mm -hmm. like Sherry, we, we are getting close to the, the end of the show. I, I'm, I, I feel like I could talk to you for hours about this. I but to finish the protocol because I only have yes. four. Okay, so, go ahead. The fifth one, so we said umabushi plum, gamaggio, grains, sauerkraut, vegetables, very important, mm -hmm. especially the root vegetables. So really into root vegetables because it's very grounding because we don't okay. eat animals. Mm -hmm. So the way we ground is we do root vegetable stews. You've probably heard of it, nishimi. It's a mm -hmm. Japanese root stew. Mm -hmm. and, dip, and using uh, just different root vegetables, stir frying and different kind of ways to cook root vegetables and also dark leafy greens, all kinds of vegetables. But we don't do the nightshades because it causes arthritis in the future. So no nightshades. And um, the fifth, so that's the fifth one. We'll get into, oh, and the sixth one will be miso soup. That's where we build our immune system is through the MISA. Because this is a protocol for people who want to heal their condition. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a health condition, then you don't really need this protocol, but you want to just keep it because later mm -hmm. it will happen. And then we have, let's see, we did all seven. And what's the last one? Can you guess? <laughs> The last one is we get in touch with <laughs> Sherry Banks. <laughs> we seaweed. find you. Seaweed is the eighth. Seaweed. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. The seventh. The seventh. One. I'm sorry. Seaweed. The seventh <laughs> protocol. I'm sorry. There's an eighth one, but we'll talk about that later. But we have the seven protocol, which is very important. And then in advance, we go into the eighth and the ninth. But right now, the seven is the most important. So the seventh one, seaweed. Mm, that's <laughs> awesome, Sherry. Talking to you has been amazing. And, uh, Definitely, we we need people to reach out to you, and we find you. We can find you on Facebook, Sherry Banks. Is that how we reach Sherry out? Sherry Brinks. I Brinks, like bank. pardon me. Bank. Sherry Brinks. Brinks pardon. Me. <laughs> Sorry, it's been a long year. Sherry yeah, I know. And thank you for your book. I've been looking into it, you know, and how you were in Japan and everything. That's just, oh, gosh, it's one of my dreams. You lived one of my dreams. Well, the, you, we have many more years ahead of us, Sherry Brinks, so plenty of time to go to Japan and um, tick that off your bucket list. Thank you so much for joining the show today. I truly appreciate having you on. Wish you uh, happy holidays. And to all our viewers, thank you so much for joining me on Lillian's Vegan World this year. If I can quickly pull up my book, um, Hawaii, A Vegan Paradise, still on sale. And uh, I'll be doing a book signing also at the Kakako uh, Farmer's Market this December 12 and December 19. So do find me there. Um, thank you so much for, for joining us. I look forward to seeing you in 2021. Happy holidays and aloha.